The proposed law also provides grounds for divorce in cases of adultery and spouse desertion for at least two years, incest and property sharing. But one of the most contentious sections is on cohabitation, that is a man and a woman living together without being officially married. When Parliament broke off last week as debate on the controversial and long-standing bill proceeded, the battle lines were clear between male and female MPs on Section 117, one that proposes that cohabiting couples can share property in case of divorce or separation. Studies show that cohabitation is on the increase. According to the 2011 Demographic Health Survey, the proportion of married or cohabiting women stood at 63%. But the study noted a decrease in the number of married couples, with the number of married women falling to 36% in 2011 from 49% in 2006. Conversely, the proportion of cohabiting couples rose from 14% in 2006 to 27% in 2011, but the Marriage and Divorce Bill does not recognize cohabitation as a form of marriage, something supported by many MPs and these women activists, including Rhoda Kalema, who was an MP when the bill was first tabled in Parliament in the early 1960s. All marriages must be registered in order to be known as a marriage. And that's where the, the cohabitation falls out because cohabitation is very casual. There is no day people who cohabit can ever remember. This was the day I went to cohabit with, with the Kenneth. We are saying it is not a recognized marriage. Therefore, uh, what we are saying, these two people who are in this relationship and uh, maybe the children that they have produced in this relationship are still citizens of the nation who need protection. The provisions in the bill on sexual relations in marriage has attracted some of the most heated debate in Parliament and outside on a bill that has been in the works for 47 years. Under the proposed law, men found guilty of marital rape will spend not less than five years in prison and also pay a fine not exceeding 2.5 million shillings. But female activists oppose the penalty. In the bill, uh, it has been criminalized, but uh, the sentence is a little very lenient. Like saying you go to prison one year or you Five pay years. some little money. Eh? Five years. What Five makes years. it different from the other rape? Because it is all sex without consent. Equally contentious is the clause on how to share property, marital or otherwise, in case of divorce or separation. Those opposed to the bill see this as giving an opportunity to unscrupulous people to enter marriages with, with targeted people and later divorce with their eyes firmly fixed on the property. Depending on the length of time you've been together, depending on what contribution you've made, that one is left to them to look at the number of factors that would be brought into place and then make a decision to see how big a share each one of you will go with. And that for us we say that is an equal share. These women activists are also out to debunk some of the myths surrounding the bill. For instance, that it ignores the importance of the family, that the bill is out to drive a wedge between women and men, that it contravenes culture and the misconceptions that after several years of cohabiting, that a couple is considered married. But the gist of the bill is protect the rights of the people in marriage. Religious leaders have called for more consultations before the bill is passed. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kasambia Member of Parliament Patrick Molindwa has petitioned Parliament Speaker Rebecca Kadaga seeking a hold to the debate in Parliament to allow for wide-ranging consultations with a view to passing a consensus bill. He claims that 13 members of Parliament have so far signed the petition. That the bill be deferred for two months to allow the members of Parliament to consult with their constituents and stakeholders like religious leaders and other people. Zahra Namoli, Ahurida Edina, NBS Television.